All right, hello, wine drinking people. Today is Wednesday, the 7th of May, getting ready to take down some Chateau Margot tonight at Scarpetta. And uh, hey, man, Wednesday, it looks like a great month, the month of May. We have got some incredible tastings. You know, one of my favorite wines, Amarone, going to be finishing up the month with our Quintarelli Amarone tasting. So, hey, I thought it fitting we should send an Amarone offer out just to whet the appetite a little bit for this wonderful elixir. And one of my favorite producers of Amarone is Brigal Dara. And this is the name of a farm. Actually, it was the name of the area. The first time this name was mentioned was in like the 13th century. It was a collection of farmhouses. And uh, the Cesare family bought this property in the 20s. And Stefano Cesare started the winery as uh, kind of a hobby in the late 70s. 1979 was their first vintage, and uh, we've gotten to know Stefano over the years. We've seen him in Italy. He's been here. He's done events with us, and an incredibly nice man, and it's great to see him getting the press for his wines, and his Valpolicella, what, where's it at? It's not even here, sorry. His entry-level wine, which is $11 and change on this offering, a lot of times scores upwards of 90 points in the wine advocate, and you know, a lot of people are confused by Valpolicella. It's the name of the area, the land of many cellars. And also there's two different styles of wines that bear that name. Uh, the Classico Valpolicella, like we have here on this offer from Brigaldar, which is a very light and refreshing red, some lovely cherry fruit, some light floral notes, great, slightly chilled, out by the pool on a hot summer day, very refreshing, and uh, just a really pleasant drink, an incredible value. And then there is the Valpolicella Repassa, which this wine is not. Okay, and the difference between the two is the Valpolicella is made with Corvina, Corvinona, Rodinella, Moldenada, the same grapes they use to make Amarone and the Valpolicella Rapassa. And when they pick the grapes, they pick them maybe a little less ripe than they would Amarone, uh, so they have a little less sugar, and then they ferment them, they put them in stainless steel, a very fresh and clean way to make a light and refreshing wine. The Amarone grapes, they dry, sometimes for up to three months. So three months later, the Valpolicella wine's already been made, sitting off in steel tasks, they crush the grapes, the dried grapes, to make the Amarone. Okay, what happens to make when you're making fine wine? You just want to let the weight crush the grapes. You don't want to press them very, uh, very, very hard. They call the pressings that part. We have to press the juice, and uh, that usually does not make a high quality wine. So you still have some sugar. You still have some juice left in those grapes after they've done the initial pressing, and uh, they take this must, and then they run the Valpola juice in the tanks over this. What that does, there's still sugar, there's still yeast in there, is it causes a secondary fermentation. That is Valpolicella Repasso, the process of passing over the, the lighter Valpolicella wine over the must to give it a little extra kick and a little, a little extra, mm, you know, and, uh, and kicks the alcohol up to a couple of points usually. P producers like Quintarelli's Valpolicella, 15%, Dal Forno's Valpolicella, 16%, alcohol. I think he tries some of his grapes also. So totally different style of wine. And then we have the Amarone, which Amarone, as I mentioned before, they dry the grapes and then they make the wine from it. Drying the grapes takes some of the water concentration out of the wine and then uh, also kicks up the alcohol level of the resulting wine. So these wines to me, some of my favorite wines and uh, you know, the Cesare family has been making innovations here. They're one of the first people to use small barrique instead of these large Slavonian oaks. So a combination of old world meets new world with these Amarones. And to me, one of the greatest producers. And like I said, he's been getting great scores. We got a few cases of the 08 vintage still left on this offer. The last few, one of the best wines you'll find under $50 from Valpolicella in the name of Amarone on the bottle, and the first ever Reserva bottling, this 2007 Reserva, which just scored 95 points in the Advocate. Like I said, it's go so great to see Stefano getting the recognition he deserves for his wines. One of the greatest producers in the Valpolicella region, uh, Bregaldara. Check it out. Everything we've got here in the store, you know we like something if we've got it in all different sizes. All right, I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember... Always drink the good stuff first.